So the factor theorem. I have got written here a cubic equation or a cubic function on the left hand side. Boys? And then on the right-hand side, I have factorized it, okay? I've either factorized it or I've done algebraic division by x minus 2, and then this was my answer. This was the quotient, so when I did the, this thing divided by this thing that I've got here. Now, when I look at this, clearly x minus 2 must be a factor of this thing that I've got here. So what would happen to the function if x was equal to 2? What would happen? What would the result of this function be if x was equal to 2? It would be equal to 0. So if, if f of x is x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4, then f of 2 would be equal to 0. And this is because x minus 2 is a factor. And because x minus 2 is a factor, when we substitute x equals 2, the value is 0. This is really, really, really important. If you substitute a value in and you get zero, you know that the corresponding factor can be put into the function, or taken out of the function, I should have said. And as you're writing that down, think to yourself, what is the significance of this graphically? What does this look like on a graph? It's a cubic, but what does this particular bit here, with the fact that x minus 2 is a factor, and the fact that when you substitute in 2, you get 0, what does that mean when you look at a graph? Pardon? It's what, sorry? It intersects at 2. We knew that, because if I asked you to sketch this graph, you would do one of the intersection points was at 2. So if, the, the, if when you substitute in 2, you get 0, then you know that x minus 2 should be a factor. And that's very important because it's going to help us do some factorizing later. So I've written down here that the factor theorem states that if f of x is a polynomial, like this one that we've got here, if when you substitute p into, p is just any number, into the function and you get 0, then x minus p is a factor of f of x. Conversely, meaning the other way around, if x minus p is a factor of f of x, then when you substitute p, you should get 0. So it's not the minus 2 that you'd be substituting in, it's the 2. And it, if it was an x plus 3 here, you wouldn't be substituting in plus 3, you would be substituting in minus 3. And so this hopefully is kind of like still linked to all the stuff we've done about roots of, of functions and what it looks like when you put things on graphs. And it's going to link with algebraic division as well. Everyone got written down what they want? OK. So this one, it says, show that x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. Now, there are two ways you could do this one. One of the ways that you could do this is what we've just learned about in exercise 7b. You could do polynomial division. But we're now going to use the factor theorem to do it in a different way to show that it is a factor. And so I've said here, I'm going to say let f of x equal this function. And by writing f of x equals blah, 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 it gives us the appropriate notation to show that we're substituting 2 into the polynomial on the next line. So I'm, uh, just a quick way of showing that I'm going to substitute in 2. Now, because this is a factor of this thing that I've got here, I can say um, that if f of 2 would be equal to 2 cubed plus 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 4, well, that's 8 plus 4 minus 8 minus 4, which is equal to 0. And so then I can say underneath, by the factor theorem, x minus 2 is a factor of f of x. 
You could have done polynomial division. This question didn't specify. Many exam questions will say, using the factor theorem, show that this is a factor. Substitute in the value and get zero for one mark. The second mark is from this sentence of saying, by the factor theorem, this is a factor, or therefore, this is a factor. You have to say that sentence, to, because otherwise the examiner is like, okay, you've subbed in and got zero. Do they even know why that's important, that it's equal to zero? And if it didn't equal zero, this is no longer in the specification. If it equals four or eight, whatever it actually equals to, what do you think that might be, what it's actually equal to? It's, it has a significance. Pardon? It's y output. Actually, in terms of polynomial division, what do you think it might represent? The remainder. Actually, when you substitute in a value, it represents the remainder of when you have divided by x minus that thing in there. So when you have 0, there is no remainder. That, that's called the remainder theorem. It's no longer in the, the A-level exam, so you won't be asked about it. But if you ever get that it's not equal to 0, that actually tells you what the remainder is. So. <laughs> You know, we did some questions earlier on where it asked you to work out what the remainder was. You could technically have subbed in a value and it would tell you what the remainder is too, okay? I'm gonna go on to the next bit because that was a really short one. So here I've got an exam question and this is from the new spec of the exam question. It says, use the factor theorem to show that x minus three is a factor of f of x. It's two marks, I just said the two marks comes from one of them subbing in, the other one of writing a sentence. So what am I going to substitute in to the, to the function? Positive. Positive 3. So I'm going to say f of 3 is going to be equal to 4 times 3 cubed minus 12 times 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 6. And no surprises here. I'm not even going to type. You should type it in your calculator. But it's equal to 0 because it's a factor. They've told us it's a factor. No reason. No <laughs> So 4 times 3 cubed minus 12 times 3 squared plus 6 minus 6. Yeah, they're going to be, um, hopefully that's equal to 0. I haven't even checked it, but it, it would be. Yeah, it is. You can, you can tell because 4 is 2 squared and 12 is 3 times 2 squared. So you've got 2 times 3 cubed, minus, sorry, 2 squared minus, times 3 squared minus 2 squared times 3 cubed. I think I said that wrong. But that's not the end of it. So you have to say, as f of 3 equals 0, by the factor theorem, x minus 3 is a factor of f of x. You do need that sentence. You get one mark, one mark. It's an easy mark. Just explain what you've done. So part B of the question, I'll give you a chance just to finish writing that bit down, but think to yourself, it says, hence, show that 3 is the only real root of the equation f of x equals 0. Well, I think if we know that f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2x minus 6, if x minus 3 is a factor, how do you think we could write it? How could I rewrite this if I know that x minus 3 is a factor? We're going to use long division because we know that if it can be factorized, there's going to be x minus 3 and then something else. So if I divide this by x minus 3, then I will know what this second bit is. And then hopefully I can show that this thing here has got no solutions because it wants 3 to be the only real root of the equation being equal to 0. So I'm going to do algebraic long division, sometimes called polynomial division. And this is why we learned this, to be able to answer problems that are like this. So I'm going to do my 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2x minus 6 divided by x minus 3. Yeah. Uh, there's not actually going to be a remainder because we know that x minus 3 is a factor. There is no remainder. 
So this thing, we're going to find out. This is going to be the answer that comes on top of this, because that's what we were just doing in the other bits of practice. And then this is going to be what type of equation? A cubic, a quadratic, a linear? A quadratic. How do you know? Because this is a cubic. This is a linear. And a cubic divided by a linear is a quadratic. So hopefully this quadratic, we're going to show, has no roots. So let's quickly do this division. We've got 4x cubed divided by x, which is 4x squared. 4x squared. Multiply by 4x squared, so we get 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Minus 12x squared. So you get 0x squared. And you bring down the 2x. So then we're going to do 2, uh, 0x squared divided by x, which is 0 for the x part. Or you could have gone straight to the linear part. Depends how you want to do this. If I then multiply by 0x, I would get this. So I have 2x, bring down the minus 6. And 2x minus 6 divided by x minus 3 is 2. And obviously, when I then multiply by the 2, I get that there is no remainder. So I can now take this information, which is 4x squared plus 2. And I know that this function can be written like this. Does that make sense? I've been able to take that function. I divided it by x minus 3. So I know that the other bit is 4x squared plus 2. So yeah. If you put that in the calculator, it becomes 0. If I put this one in the calculator. That's that one. Put, eight in. put what in the calculator? If I put that yeah. in the calculator. Yeah, 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 that's 0. I've been doing it. <laughs> Have I done? Yeah, you, of course it is. You, I'll, you need to make sure that. You're doing 4 times 3 cubed, not 4 times 3 all cubed. I'll show you it in a second, okay? So the question wants us to say that it is the only real root. Well, this one is a root of 3. We need to show that this one has no real root. How do we show that quadratics have no real root? Pardon? Good. So to show 4x squared plus 2 has no real root, we use the discriminant. Discriminant. So we have 4x squared plus 2. And so b squared minus 4ac is going to be, what is the result of b? What's b squared in this going to be? Zero. Zero. And then you've got minus 4 times a times c, which is minus 32. So because b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, there are how many roots? One. No real roots. There are no real roots. Hence, 3 is the only real root of f of x.